Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to week nine of basic training. Week nine. I got my favorite mug up. Well, second favorite. This was my favorite. I got it like two years ago. It says speak up. I got it from Target in New York. Um, and that should set the tone for today. <laughs> speak up. I can't believe we're already on week nine. Uh, that means we have, let's see, there are 16 weeks. Means we have seven left. We have seven more weeks left. And you're done with basic training. That blows my mind. I feel like it was just summer yesterday. Um, but whatever the case, I'm curious to know how this training has transformed your creative process. Um, I'm not sure how, maybe I'll send out a survey at the end or I don't know. Should I have sent a survey at the beginning? Probably so. <laughs> um, I think I've mentioned this weeks prior. Oh, let me make a, let me put an alarm. I think I mentioned this weeks prior and I said that I would like to turn this into some type of an ebook. Um, once it is done, or maybe close to done, um, some type of ebook or workbook so that you can have this um, again in another form to uh, assist in your creative process. Today, we're going to talk about taking care of yourself, taking care of yourself, um, why it's important, what does it mean? to take care of yourself. I'm sure you know what, what it means to take care of yourself, right? Taking care of yourself and peace and love. These were buzzwords, I guess, really big during and, and after, during post pandemic, excuse me, um, even though we're still in the pandemic, but uh, I guess 2020 opened up the possibilities for peace for many people who had not known peace yet, right? And I think that um, that's something that we shouldn't forget. A lot of people found peace in 2020 and we shouldn't forget why. Why did you find peace all of a sudden? There's this machine going, right? And you know, I get to my, my whole tipness. <laughs> Rarely do I use that word for myself, but it's a good way to describe, right? I, I I bet it put you in the mood, right? Once I said whole tip, you knew where I was going, right? So it's a good way. I like to use it to describe uh, this way of speaking, right? So there's this machine that we are a part of. And because it's necessary for our survival, we don't question it. So we go to work, right? Because it's necessary for our survival, not because we need to work, we'll get there. Well, sure, not because we need to work as human beings, although we do um, as people need to feel um, satisfied with our creations, not, yeah, but okay, we'll get there later. We don't question working because we need the money to survive because somebody said, or multiple people or a system or this machine requires us to pay for our food, to pay for our shelter, right? It's not something that we, that's not something that we as humans have to do, right? We don't necessarily have to have a money system to survive. Like it's not, it's not like it's a natural part of human survival. It is natural for us to, um, for as long as we have been alive to barter, what we call bartering, right? It is natural for us to grow crops. It is natural for us to have shelter, but it's not necessarily 
natural is not necessarily a part of our make to have money. It just isn't. It's something that was created and it's something that we're still doing. And because we're still doing this thing that was created, we have to pay for shelter. We have to pay for food, even if it's not scarce. All right, in New York City, there are met thousands and thousands of apartments. I think there was some study or there was some kind of math done where there are more empty apartments than there are homeless people in New York City. So it's not that there are there isn't space. It's just that that is just the way that we do it. And we don't question it because I get it. Like how will you how will you survive if you stop paying for rent or if you decide because if you decide that you no longer want to pay rent you know that that means that you might be houseless right or you might not I don't know we haven't all questioned it <laughs> we've all questioned it but I I what I mean by questioning is it we have not as a whole or as a body of people or as many people decided to stop doing things a certain way. What I really wanted to talk about today was finding peace, but we got into that little bit uh, because I feel like artists, creatives will uh, soon, sooner than later, will decide together that um, this machine is not working for us. Um, and then other people will will join, right? Just like in, in, like I was saying, in 2020, a lot of people found peace because they, they, they removed themselves from that machine. Um, although a lot of people were going to work, they were going to work at home and they, they realized wow, I was forcing myself to go somewhere when I could have been in the comfort of my home, which also causes, um, which also led for some people, um, I guess, other issues, right? Because then when you're at home, then you're less social. So we also do need to be social peoples. Uh, but whatever the case, what is finding peace for you today? What does that mean? When I think about finding peace, I don't really think about looking for it, like if it's hiding. I think about um, the things that are not letting me see peace, right? So if that could be people, that could be friends, family members that you're keeping around um, for whatever reason, but they don't bring you peace, right? Um, and you know, not that you have to get rid of people, but maybe you have to have a conversation. Uh, maybe you have to set boundaries, right? And that's when actually you decide whether or not this, excuse me, this particular person or this situation is working or not working for me. Once you state where you are uncomfortable, that's all you have to do. Then you listen to the response. And that will inform your decision. You understand what I'm saying? Let's say you have a cousin who constantly is talking shit about um, whatever. Let's say talking shit about you in some way. Me, I'm paralyzed in my right arm, right? Let's say I have a cousin and I don't have a cousin doing this, but I, let's say I have a cousin constantly talking shit about my right arm. And let's say it makes me uncomfortable. Let's just say, because it doesn't, it doesn't have to make me uncomfortable, but let's say for this, it makes me uncomfortable that my cousin is talking shit about my right arm constantly. It is my job first and foremost to say to this person, you know, considering I want to keep them in my life, hey, it makes me uncomfortable when you say or when you do blank. That is your responsibility. Their response is what will inform your decision. So their response could be, I actually didn't know that that made you uncomfortable. I thought, you know, 
we we talk we joke all the time about different things. I thought it was just another joke, right? In that case, your cousin learned something, or they can be like, "Fuck you," you know. I make jokes about whatever the fuck I want. Mm -hmm. It's up to you, but if that were me, I would be like, "Hey," then. You know, I, I, I can't be in close proximity to you because every time I am, I'm just uncomfortable, right? So there could be some people that you're keeping around that uh, make you uncomfortable, but you, maybe you're not speaking up about the discomfort. You know, they could care or they, you know, or they could be, um, or they might think that, you know, they might not know that you're uncomfortable, but it is your job to speak up. So some things like that could be getting in the way of your peace. Things like sleep. I listen to Neil deGrasse uh, Tyson. I listened to his Star Talk podcast. The most recent episode was about sleep and its relation to um, its, its relation to our body, its relation to our mind. Um, sometimes we could be just grouchy throughout the day because we need more sleep. And I know we know this. We know this as kids. Remember nap time? I mean, I, I was never really much of a napper, but uh, maybe I need to be, right? That could be the, the thing that's keeping you from your peace. Other things that could be keeping you from peace could be food as well, right? Some foods that don't help nourish your body, your bones, your, your, your circular, your, what is it, circulatory? Your bloodstream, right? Your blood system. That could be getting in the way of your peace. But why the fuck is peace even so important? Why am I emphasizing you to, um, why am I emphasizing peace? Why is it so important, right? From a place of peace, from a place of despair, let's start there, right? From a place of despair, we can create, right? But from a, from a place of peace, we can create and know what to do with that creation, right? From a place of despair, I, I might make a 10 minute video about how I hate a situation and, um, and start talking shit about somebody for 10 minutes and then post it, right? You know how that goes. That invites drama and me personally, I ain't in the place for that, right? Because then there's a, a snowball effect, right? But from a place of peace, I can make that video and the video might even be different, right? The, the video might, let's give an example because I'm like talking out in the open, but I'm gonna give you an example. Right now, the, a lot of people are talking about war, right? From a place of despair, I can say, um, actually, I'm not even, I think you understand what I'm saying. From a, from a place of peace, we can create, from a, from a level-headed stance, understand what we made, understand that what we made is for X, Y, and Z, and understand where to place it. A lot of times when, when there's war, when there's fighting, people are not operating from a place of peace, obviously. There's a lot of these petty wars that could, could not have been had people operated from a place of peace. And we should not separate ourselves from, from we should not look at our government and see, wow, they're doing horrible things and then not look at ourselves. That's being a hypocrite. If you are criticizing the government for not operating from a, from a place of peace, you need to look at yourself. Are you operating from a place of peace? Are you taking care of yourself so that you are also operating from a place of peace? When I think about war, when I see war, I don't just see the big ones with death. I see the small ones too, right? I see the, the, the arguments. I, I don't weigh one bigger than the other. They both weigh equally to me. 
because they're both coming from a place of a misunderstanding, despair, hate, et cetera, et cetera. And if you're operating from that place now, imagine when you have more, quote, end quote, power. You will keep operating in that way. When you're successful, you will keep operating in that way. It's not worse because there are things that can no longer kind of stop you or humble you or, or you know. There was, um, is a story that I have for myself um, that not a lot of people know about, but I'm gonna say briefly here with you. I'm gonna share a story with you brief, okay? When I was born, my doctor paralyzed my arm. We know this, I think I've said this before. Um, he did it, I wasn't like that in the belly. He pulled me out of my mom from my arm and like my arm, dislocated from the shoulder. Imagine being a newborn. Like now at your big age, that happens, somebody can pop it back. But imagine nerves, certain nerves haven't formed yet. You know, you still have a damn soft spot on your forehead, you know? But <laughs> when he did that, he lied. He lied and he said that I was already like that in the womb. Um, for whatever reason, you know, whatever. He wanted to cover his own ass, but he made it worse. Long story short, long story long, my parents sued. They won the lawsuit because obviously you can prove, you know, if you've had multiple ultrasounds, you can prove that um, I was not always like that. And I don't know, they must have thought my parents were stupid. Um, so they won a lawsuit. I didn't know that I had any of that money. Uh, my parents put it away till I was 18 or the insurance put it away. I don't know how they settled that. I was a newborn, um, but they put it away until I was 18 and I was to get it once I was at a legal age, right? 18. And it's interesting because my entire life before that was like homelessness, um, home shelter insecurity, food insecurity. Like we were living on couches, we were couch surfing. We were my aunt's house, my cousin's house, my grandmother's house. And there were a lot of us. I have three younger siblings, I'm the oldest. Um, so there's a lot of us and we just kept moving. Um, and so I didn't know what it was to save money. I didn't know what it was to have money. Honestly, I didn't know what it was to respect myself. Um, when you have so many insecurities, they kind of um, impact your self-esteem, right? I, I, I was kind of out of control, I'm not gonna lie. At 18, then I got that money. I didn't even know I had that money. I got that money at 18. And what did I do? I went and I bought clothes. I went and I started paying for friends, right? I started paying for friends. That's how I say it because that's the truth. That's not how I saw it at 18. At 18, I was like, at 18, I was living in the Bronx. And so also because I moved so much, I moved to different schools. I think I already spoke about that as well. Um, and so there was no real, I couldn't establish long-term friendships, right? If you're switching schools every other year and you don't have the latest Jordans, you're not really gonna have friends in New York. Back then, I guess, I don't know how it is now. Maybe people have become nicer, but there's so much insecurity in New York, um, housing and food and all the things that, I don't blame the kids that made fun of me. I don't blame the people who didn't wanna be my friend because I didn't have Jordans because I was wearing shacks. I don't blame them. It isn't, it isn't on them. Um, it's on a system. It's on a machine that failed them. It's on a machine that failed me. But anyways, I turn 18. I start balling. I start buying clothes. I start now, mind you, I never really traveled before this. So I only watch TV and on TV in the music videos. It's what is Miami is uh, is Miami is Vegas. That's the only two really places that I went to. And when I say I bought friends, I would make friends 
because now I dress nice, people notice me, right? They're going to come up to me. They're going to say, you know, hey, I want to be your friend. They don't know anything about me, but it's the way I look, <laughs> you know? Uh, and then, you know, they obviously come from the same place that I came from. So they don't have money to travel. I want to go to Miami. I make these new friends. I, at the time, again, insecurity, I didn't really, I wasn't okay with being by myself. So I paid their way too. And of course, people accept it. I would do not accept a free trip to Miami when you're 18 or 19. All expenses paid. I'm talking flights. I'm talking uh, the whole hotel, you know. So I bought friends, right? Uh, and it got, it, it kept going. That snow, snowball effect. I stopped. Um, I felt like I couldn't be stopped anymore, right? I was on top of the world. My ego was up here. Um, I started doing things that were a little destructive. I started not being so kind, right? I mean, I'm a softie, so I've always been kind. But, you know, I stopped giving a fuck about some things. And I just did whatever the fuck I wanted to do. Um, and, you know, it got to a point where spirit humbled me. Um, some of these people that I was being friends with started stealing from me, obviously. Um, we're going to go over 20 minutes today. Started stealing from me. And, you know, that was like the eye opener. Um, you know, I, I was like, I, I, I. I, I wanted to unalive myself. I didn't see um, a reason to keep going. And not only did they steal from me, they stole everything that I had. All of a sudden I saw my bank account and it was negative. And, you know, I had bought a car even, but, you know, people were using my card without me knowing there was a lot going on. Um, and I didn't know peace, right? I didn't know peace growing up. I didn't know peace, especially with, and even with having money, I still didn't know peace. You, you feel me? Even with having money, I still didn't know peace. So when you get to a place of success, and I know you will, one, because you're watching this, but also uh, because you're an artist. And honestly, as long as you're you're making your art, you will be successful because it doesn't matter what company wants to uh, work with you. What matters is that you are creating, right? And that's something that is, is important for us as human beings. So you are already successful. But when you get to a point of, I guess, social status or money, that's not going to help your case if you don't know peace right now. Um... So how do you find peace, right? How do you find peace besides removing, you know, certain situations that might not be peaceful for you? Take care of yourself. There's a lot going on um, in social media. I'm going to say that, and I'm going to say that out loud, and I'm going to stick beside that. Because there was always a lot going on in the world. There was always a lot going on in the world. It's just big on social media right now. And it's been big on social media before, right? Things going on in the world. But with things being big on social media, I have a love-hate relationship with that. One, because um, I personally don't believe that um, I personally have a problem with I believe that when you scream when you scream at a wall that has no ears you're not only not being heard but you're depleting your energy and therefore not have much energy to create. 
I'm not saying it's a problem to speak out about the things that matter to you, the things that you find um, unjust. Please do speak out. Please do. But I think that there's a thin line where that then turns into things like depression, um, mental instability. And I see a lot of us, uh, me and people who I follow, not necessarily you watching this, uh, but I see that happening where, you know, we're, we're looking at the horrors, you know, just looking at it and reposting it, uh, but not always looking at our lives and how we might be acting on how we might be destructive in our own ways or how, you know, things around us might be destructive as well. I think the, the I, I truly believe that when we see injustice in other places, we need to see it within ourselves quickly. And we need to see it not only within ourselves, but within our environments quickly. Because we can speak out about another country and that's great. But when your own country is also killing you and you're not doing anything at the same time, things can get lost in the sauce. You following me? Do you get me? Right now, they're creating Cop City. Where I live. And while there was a lot of noise for that in the summer, I don't hear enough noise about it now. And I feel like now, while we hear genocide in somewhere else, is the perfect time to talk about the genocide in your own living environment. That is solidarity. That is solidarity. I won't stand for that in my environment. So of course I won't stand for that in any other environment. And honestly that helps with the confusion of arguments that the media pushes. The confusion of arguments. Anyways. Should we leave it at that? <laughs> Should we leave it at that? I don't know. Um, yeah. Find your peace in this time of despair. Find your peace in this time of despair. It will be worth it. Believe me, it will be worth it. It will be worth it. And you will thank yourself in the future for, for making space for that peace now so that you can have a level head so that you can continue to eat and, and be with loved ones. It's an interesting um, phenomenon, and I'm explaining, where things happen in the world and we, sh we all share that one thing. We all speak about that one thing and we neglect all of the other webs of the same spider. Did you get that? Now would be the perfect time to speak out about the injustices in your community. You see, once you're politicized, once you're angry, once you see things for what they are, you can't go back. There is no competition. 
for how many times you've posted about something. Some people aren't exactly being politicized. They're just rolling with um, we're social people, right? We're social animals. So there, a lot of people are rolling with what is social. Um, and just like every time war comes around in, in our media and leaves and comes back and leaves, people forget. People forget. Um, and I think people forget because for a lot of reasons, people forget. This thing with Gaza is not new. It's not new. Um, it's not new. When I when I was when I first opened my eyes to things uh, about a decade ago, twenty thirteen, actually a full decade ago, this situation with Gaza was just like now. Bombing hospitals, killing their own media, killing other, you know, media. This thing is not new, and it, in the darn sure wasn't new in 2013 yet. I had just realized it for the first time, and the way that I realized it, um, I realized it in the way that I didn't forget. And so it informed how I move. It informed what I care about. And although at that time I didn't see it, you know, now's the time to speak out about what's happening in your own country. I didn't see that yet. I had an art show for Gaza, actually. Um, there was a few trusted fund um places to donate uh, and I made hats that had Gaza's um, area code on them and I sold them and every single penny, I didn't make any profit that day, every single penny went to that organization. I didn't see yet that it was a good time to speak out about um, the police system in my own country. I learned maybe two years after that to do that. Um, but this thing happens in cycles. It happens in waves. Being politicized and, you know, for my astrology girlies, you know, the age of Aquarius is here. Uh, from what I hear, I'm not, I'm not necessarily an astrology girly, but from what I hear is that a lot of things are dismantling a lot and will continue to. And that's the importance of creativity right there. Things are crumbling, but it's what are we gonna create instead that will be most important. Things will die, but it's what will we build after that will be most important. 2020 was also a good, um, was a good time for that. There was a lot of despair. Things broke down. But what will we create now? What will we create now? Now that all eyes are on that despair. All right. I'm going to leave it at that. I love y'all. Um, I believe now that we have seven weeks left. I would like to get into uh, specific ways to train yourself as a creative. I think up till now, we've had great conversation on our mental health, spiritual health, environmental health. And I think I will dedicate the last seven weeks 
the last seven trainings on um, practical ways to build what it is that you want to build. So that might be from the idea to writing out what you need to actualize that idea, how to stay focused, how to shift when things are not working, right? How to not force creativity. Knowing when to move forward and when to fold and so on and so forth, how to put it out, marketing and stuff like that. I love y'all. Stay safe. Uh, protect your peace. And I'll see you next week.